Hello and welcome back. This is standard costing part four, variable overhead variances. My disclaimer and copyright notice, the information and opinions in this presentation are those of the author only and not the author's employers or affiliated organizations, including but not limited to Irvine Valley College in the South Orange County Community College District. The presentation is for educational purposes only and does not constitute any legal or accounting advice whatsoever. This presentation is copyright 2008 to 2020 by Bennett Tchaikovsky. All rights are reserved. Any distribution is strictly prohibited. Presentations from time to time use, uh, use information from third parties or the third party information. The third party information is the property of those respective copyright holders and the author does not make any claim to that third party information. So today we're gonna to be looking at variable overhead variances or more specifically the spending and efficiency variances. For variable overhead, we're gonna kinda of take that same approach that we've done with direct materials and direct labor. So again, what are we trying to do here? We've got these accounts in that are going into work in process. We need a real time way to go through and watch what we are spending if we're getting into overages. So, in this video right here, our video number four, we already went through and we computed the total overhead variance, right? That was the first thing we did. And I can go back right here, go in time. Oh my God, I'm breaking the fourth wall right here. I've got a 33,625 total overall favorable variance for overhead. But now I need to break that down. Look at that, th at the components. Overhead is made up of two parts, variable and fixed. So, I need to compute first what is my total variable overhead variance. And then looking at this again, it's kind of similar to what we were doing with direct materials and direct labor. I need to go down and drill down into that a little bit more in terms of variable overhead spending and then the efficiency variances. So going back over here to our example. So right over here, this is FSI have the following actual fixed and variable overhead costs. So for this video, what we're gonna be focused on is what I actually spent on variable overhead uh, versus over here, what I had gone through and I budgeted. So over here, I budgeted uh, $450,000. So that's really what we're gonna be going through and exploring today. So when we look at variable overhead, and this should look very familiar to you, what we're doing here is I'm taking my driver. And when we look at this over here is that um, FSI budgets variable and fixed overhead based on direct labor hours. So direct labor hours is our driver. So that's why we're going through and using it here. So we're gonna be using the actual hours or the budgeted hours that we actually spent or that we should have spent making that quantity. So over here, this is the kind of the setup that we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking the actual hours, and this is the actual direct labor hours, and that is because that is the driver. I'm going to multiply that by my actual variable overhead rate, and this will tell me how much I actually spent. I then compare, I do then compare this to my budget, which is going to be right over here, this 450000 And then I'm going to come up over here with my middle value and then further look at the variances. So let's go through over here and first go through and determine the total variance. So let's take a look a little bit more closely in terms of what we're trying to do with the first part. So as with any going through with any of these uh, types of problems, the first thing we're going to want to figure out is, you know, what is the total variable overhead variance? And what we need to do is to say to ourselves, what did we actually spend on our fixed, or excuse me, what did we actually spend on variable overhead? The amount that we spent on variable overhead was 392,000. And this is a number that was given to us. And so this is the total amount that we spent on our overhead. And I wanna compare this to what we actually went through and budgeted or what was our standard. And you know, for this problem, and this goes back to the second video where we were talking about the amount of direct labor hours going through to produce the, the units. So this, this company produced 30,000 units and they used 14,000 hours of direct labor. The standards they had set up was 0.5 direct labor hours per unit. 
So the amount of um, direct labor that they used to produce 30,000 units would be 15,000. Over here, and that's where they're getting the direct labor hours, it's 30,000 times 0.5, the direct labor hours per unit. Over here, my budgeted variable overhead is at 450,000. So when I look at this, so if my total budgeted variable overhead was 450 and my hours that I actually worked in terms, I was supposed to work in terms of direct labor, what exactly is this value here? Well, if I take, if I look at this and knowing that the relationship of the hours times the standard variable overhead rate per hour is equal to my total budget for variable overhead, it would be 15,000 times the SVR equals 450,000. And when we look at this here, this is going to be my SVR is going to be 450,000 divided by 15,000, or this should be $30. Now, if we look at this here and, and just to kind of go through and check our work, because this is a variable type, it, it makes sense then if it's $30 per hour, where did this 506,250 come from? Well, it's 16,875 times 30 or 506,250. Where did this 393 come from for the budgeted variable overhead? Well, this is gonna be 13,125 times this or 393,750. So I kind of know that I'm on the right track when I have this right over here. So again, my budgeted variable overhead is right here. So this is what I budgeted. This is what I plan to spend. So when I actually look what I did actually spend, right, of 392,000, well, where would this have come from? Well, if I'm also, if I'm using this kind of the same relationship, I had over here 14,000 hours of direct labor. So if I had 14,000 hours of direct labor, that produced those 30,000 units. And again, wanna see where that 14,000 came from, uh, go back and take a look at the prior video too. So here, my actual rate of basically times or 14,000 times the actual variable overhead rate is equal to 392,000. So over here, my ABR is gonna be equal to 392 divided by 14,000. Or over here, this will be $28. So the actual amount that for basically my variable overhead rate or the actual amount I was paying per hour using kind of like these are the actual costs, but kind of making this more into a comparison was at $28 per hour. So, and again, this is not, this is more to help us go through and analyze. I'm really more focused here on the 392,000. But if I want to be able to compare it to what I actually budgeted for my variable overhead, I need to break it down into these two uh, component parts. So this is going to be, so my overall variance So my overall variable overhead variance is going to be my actual hours times the AVR minus the standard hours times the SVR or my standard variable overhead rate or 392,000 minus 450,000. And what this will give me is 392 minus 450 or 58,000. Is this favorable or unfavorable? Well, I spent less than I actually budgeted. So this is gonna be an overall favorable variable overhead variance. The next part that I come down to, so once, I, once I've done this part here for variable overhead, now I'm gonna go through and insert my middle value, which will look very, very familiar to you from the other videos. So here I'm gonna go through and what I'm gonna do is in my middle value, it's gonna be my actual hours 
times my standard variable overhead rate. And this here will be 30. And then I'm gonna be comparing this to my budgeted variable overhead. So right over here, I'm kind of going through and, and going through the same exercise right over here in terms of, well, I've got a $58,000 overall favorable variable overhead variance, but where is this coming from? And so this is really coming from two different components. Let's take a look at where these are coming from. So right over here, I am, when I compare this value to the middle value, I am leaving my actual hours constant. And so what I'm focusing on is my variable overhead rate, or in this case right here, we're gonna call this a variable overhead spending variance. So let's go back over here. So this part here, my actual hours times the actual variable overhead rate minus my actual hours times my standard overhead rate. This is gonna give me my spending variance. So here I'm gonna get 392,000 times 420 less, excuse me, minus 420. So my overall, or so my spending variance over here for my variable overhead is gonna be $28,000. And is this gonna be favorable or unfavorable? Well, since my actual rate per overhead hour was less than what I had actually budgeted, um, again, it's going to be a favorable variable overhead spending variance. Okay. The next one I want to be looking at over here for variable costing is going to be this part here, which is going to be my efficiency variance. For my efficiency variance, this is going to be my actual hours times the standard variable overhead rate minus the standard hours times the single, or basically the standard variable overhead rate, okay? So this is gonna be what we call our efficiency variance. How efficient was I in terms of this? And again, because I'm focused here in terms of my hours. This really ties in with direct labor because this is really the same kind of function. And because the variable overhead and the fixed overhead are being applied based on direct labor, that's why this should look extremely familiar to you. So when I take 420,000 minus 450,000, this here is going to be giving me an efficiency variance of 420 minus 450,000 or 30,000. Since I actually worked less hours than I had budgeted, this is going to be a favorable variable overhead efficiency variance. So, what do we do with this prop question? First thing we always are gonna go through and do is we need to compute the overall variance. Then by inputting that middle value, I'm then gonna be able to break this down further. My last step for all these different types of questions is going to be right over here. Well, my total variance for variable overhead was 58,000 overall favorable variable overhead variance. Where is this coming from? It's coming from two places. It's coming from a spending variance. And this over here is at 28,000, which was a favorable, favorable variable overhead spending variance. I have then my efficiency variance, which is gonna be over here at 30,000, which will give me a favorable variable overhead efficiency variance. So my total variance, is going to be to the sum of these two parts right over here. So this again is my overall favorable efficient, uh, uh, my overall favorable variable overhead variance. So when we look at this question, and this is what's really, really important. So this is the, we're nearing the conclusion of video number four. So the first thing we did 
is going back over here and looking at this. The first step in our overhead problems is to come up with what is the total overhead variance, meaning we're taking the total overhead we actually spent versus the budgeted overhead. And again, you got to be careful to make sure you got that right capacity in there. The second thing we went through and did is now we're breaking this down further. So our second step here is we're going to now look at total overhead is composed of variable and fixed. So what we're doing right here is we're now focused on our variable overhead. So what we're doing is we're now looking then at variable overhead. We're comparing the total amount that we actually went through and spent versus our budgeted. And so right over here, this is a $58,000 favorable variable overhead variance. But what is this made up of? Well, to figure out what this is made up of, what we're, what we're gonna do right here is we're going to be putting in this middle value, very, very similar to our other questions between our actual hours and the standard variable rate. This allows us to isolate um, these differences here. And when we look at the 392 and the 420, this is a spending variance because it's focused on the rate. Over here on the efficiency, this is basically because I'm focused here on the hours that I work. And this is gonna be a favorable, favorable efficiency variance. Remember, this looks a lot like what we were doing for direct labor. And the reason being is because overhead is being applied based on direct labor. So that's the end of video number four. I want to thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please send them to me at 1812cpa at gmail.com. Have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow.